Hey, guys, Lux here, back with our newly blind playthrough of Morrowind. So last time we... Yeah, we ran around. We did potentially one of the quests for the East Empire Company side of the Solstheim DLC. Wow, excuse me. And then put our invisibility charm on and ran around a lot of the map. Finally found Hrothmund's Barrow, found the crashed airship and found Hrothman's Barrow. And, uh... Last few days, actually, it's been... It's been pretty decent. I've been on a staycation and just kind of playing this, but I've been doing about five episodes a day. And then... That actually gives me enough time to record five episodes and then process them, and then I can upload them while I'm... while I'm sleeping. So it's been pretty nice. Uh... Today is this is episode number six of the day because I, I get into the bar I get into the the burrow the barrow and I'm like and I'm like I I kind of want to keep going I kind of want to keep going so let's let's do this we're just here basically to find the charm and uh, <clears throat> we've explored a I mean we've ran around a significant amount. And I'm okay with that. It's, um... It's... This is... I mean, this is about the same size as, as this. From nicest to cool. Uh, or... Or... Hlaod, Sedanin, Balmora, Pelagia. Like, this is a lot more dense. You know, it, it just depends. Depends how it is. So, all right, we'll see. Where's my, uh... Okay, one directly ahead, huh? Why am I, why am I getting stuck here? So now, I don't know if this shows... Why do I feel like that's going to open... Is this a big puzzle area? Okay, what is that? Bone wolf? Is that what that said? Bone wolf. Wow, let's. This is cool as hell. Check this out. All right, where's my uh... ring of Azura? Night eye restore fatigue. See, I probably should have done that. Actually, that's... I will do the... Look at this freaking thing. It's got its head. It has... Some of the paws. I think that's... I think that's just some skin on the outside. It's basically... Yeah. It's an undead wolf, right? I don't... Oh, yeah, and I mean, it says we use detect animal, so that was definitely it. Is that, uh, you think that's Hrothmund? Why? Hmm. Amulet of Infectious Charm, Fortify Personality, Weakness to Common Disease. He wants the ladies, right? This, uh, oh, and Drained Fatigue. So it's gonna make you... It, it weakens you and makes you susceptible to... Diseases of the flesh, shall we say? Rothman's axe, which is strange. You can't, it's not, I mean, maybe you can interact with it. I don't know. And then, um, so presumably this is Hrothmund. No, Stalrim. So this has to be an enemy or something. Ancient wooden chest, silver long sword, and gold. It's 
probably okay. It's probably okay to take the stuff. I don't... I guess I don't understand why... Why the axe is here? Do I... Do I click on it? Let's take the charm first. Strange that we're just allowed to come in here and the spirit is like, oh, yeah, okay, if you know the password, come in here and take the... Take whatever you want. I'm gonna click on the axe. Nothing happened. There's gotta be more to it than this. You don't have the tools to do anything with this. Maybe you need... Well, probably not the axe, but... Um, okay, well, that's all then. Then we're good. Well, let's, uh... I guess I'm gonna leave. And, uh... Where's my... Here it is, Ring of the Wind. Then I guess that's it for now. Uh, okay. All right. Watch out for this. Yep. See, she's not wearing... Supposedly she has some kind of... Oh, where does this road go? That's what I'm curious about. And another one of them. Like, they have bear helms and wolf helms and all that stuff. But they don't do anything with it. I want to know what the deal with the axe is. I know I have the recall. I'm going to use that here in a second. Huh, that's kind of... A little, little on the underwhelming side. I mean, you just... You basically just follow the road to the bar the barrow. Still, it's cool. I, you know, I don't know, man. I'd like to get the axe, I guess. I don't want to... I don't know if I necessarily want to use it. I don't remember... There was... There was some point where I was... Oh, I guess since I'm right near Skull Village, I may as well stop in there and be like, Yo, what's up? But, um... <sighs> there was something where... Reaver... Yep. Where I was like, uh... I kept switching weapons. I'd use one for a while and then switch to something else. A Secret of Mana, I did that because you, were, you had to level all the different weapons. You didn't have to, but you could. Was that a wolf? On the... It's got to be carved, right? Oh my god, I can't see. Okay, it probably is. Skull Village Shaman's Hut. Is this like, uh, like the Ashlanders, where I don't just go into the... the hut you want to be invited or something? I don't know. Lastner's House. 
Alvring, Whitebeard, Ice Mane. This is a pretty big little area, actually. But I don't know. I it, It's funny because every time I see something like that, like the axe, I'm like, man, it would be nice if they had something in here similar to the... Um, I don't know what you call it, the Dragonborn Museum in uh, that one mod for Skyrim. Because I was, I was really... You know, I was, um... I liked that. You would find all this stuff, and as you would go in, it would fill up the museum, and you'd have to invest in it as well, and... You know, you'd... It was actually pretty neat. They'd want... You'd have to build... There was, like, the, the nature exhibit portion, and you'd build uh, dioramas. Or, excuse me, it would get filled in. You'd have to bring... Bring five... Drew waxes to us, and then it adds the the Drew thing to the aquatic section. It was it was literally a whole freaking museum. It was astonishing, you know. And they had all the it was a whole library. Every time you brought a book from, you you'd basically want to keep going back and be like, yes, check my check my inventory and pull anything that you don't already have. And at first it was kind of a pain because, you know, they'd be like, oh, all of this, all of your weapons and armor, we don't have any of those yet. Or even stuff like Mara's blouse and, and the skirt, you know, unique items. They'd be like, oh yeah, we're going to put that in there. But you'd have to, um, if you wanted, it, it would basically duplicate them, assuming you had the proper... You'd have to go get fabrics and stuff, so it could... So the the workshop section could... You know, um... It, it would take the originals, and you would have a, a copy which did the same thing. It was it was kind of neat. It's like, it's like well, you're, you're using the actual museum piece. Uh, we're going to hold on to that. We're going to hold on to the original. You'll just have a... Reproduction or whatever. You know, it's like we have the original painting, but you can use you can use a, a copy. It was a neat little thing. Skull Honor Guard. Now here's one who can hold their own. How are you? That armor is pretty cool looking. All right, so. They want us to do the whole, like, live with the skull, get in good with the skull. I guess... I guess the question is, who do I talk to first? We'll save here. There's a bunch of dudes just hanging out. Um, what was my... What was my mission here? Uh... Oh, the disappearance? Worship animals. They may be responsible for Captain Karras. Remain with them until I know more. Okay. Right, so these dudes may have kidnapped the captain. They might be werewolves. I think that's the implication. And you... Considering you're wearing, like, the darkest armor, you're wearing... Uh, here's one who can hold their own. Look at How this. Look at these. Look at these frickin' pauldrons. This is cooler than anything in Skyrim or even Oblivion. Oblivion had some lame frickin' stuff. Why is it Morrowind? This is what's weird. Like, a 20-year-old game has stuff that's better than current day. Frickin' Fallout 4. Look at this shit. This is way better than anything in Fallout 4. With the exception of maybe the Raider power armor. 
I mean, there, there, don't get me wrong, there were some really cool armors in Fallout 4, but many of them looked like shit. Um, okay, who, who do we talk to first, I guess? They're all named NPCs, aren't they? This is a grand day. Greetings. Okay, let's see. You are not of the Skull. Speak with Thurston Hartfang in the Great Hall. He is our leader and will deal with you. Excellent. That's what I wanted to know. In the Great Hall. I found the Nord Village. The people here have told me to speak to Thurston Hartfang, their leader. He is in the Great Hall, which is probably this one. Yep, because it's the big one. It's the biggest hall, therefore it's the Great Hall. Look, don't tell me about your why not? That's got to be him. So this is probably the precursor to the companions from Skyrim, I, I would wager. Really? Look at this throne. That's cool. What do you want, stranger? Why are you among the skull? What do you want, stranger? The Skull wish you no harm, but you will mind your manners while you are within our walls. We will make no exceptions. Now, what is this I hear about an attack on the Imperial Fort? That's what I'm... That's what I'm here to inquire about, if you guys have heard anything. Those soldiers, Pafa, they cut their trees and dig their holes and have little to show after a day's toil. They do not respect this lander as creatures, and for that I find them offensive. But, though I have no love for them, the Skull would never do such a thing. We would prefer, we prefer to let the Imperials kill themselves slowly. Sure. But these creatures that attacked, these were not wolves of this island. Now, have you finished your business here? They were not wolves of this island. I suspect they were... Well, yeah. Regular wolves can't tear down stone. We are the Skull. Wolves are one of the most blessed of the Allmaker's creations. They are fast and agile, and they are careful and clever hunters. And they're loyal, too, I think. And I think when they mate, they mate for life. You know? Which is... Seems, like, honorable to me, but, you know. Uh, let's see. You say you brought the bones of one of our ancestors. Stupid Imperials. They need to learn to leave things as they are. Still, it is good you have returned this to the Skull. Perhaps there is hope for you and your kind. You are welcome here for the moment, but there is much to atone for. So, in a way, Skull and the Nords, you could say. Possibly the Nords. Definitely the Skull. Very similar to the Dunmer. You know, they respect their ancestor, all that. The Imperials in their fort brought nothing but harm to these lands. They cut the trees and dig the earth. They are wasteful, lazy, and careless. They have no comprehension of the oneness of the land. It is this oneness from which the Skull derive our strength, and the Imperials have defiled these lands. May as well increase his, uh, you know, disposition. Tell me about the oneness. This is what gives the Skull power. It is the balance of our lands, the trees and the waters, wolf and bear. The Imperials have no respect for this balance, and we pay the price. Through their carelessness, the Imperials have upset the natural order, the oneness of the land. This is their nature. It must be balanced once again, and the Allmaker appeased. I wish for you to make things right, Loxley. You will be the one to restore the power of the Skull. Okay. It is right that you do this, as it is your people who have caused the damage. It's not... I mean, I guess technically, yeah, even though I'm a Nord. I fall under Imperial, yeah. Okay, uh, speak with Korst Windai in the Shaman's Hut. He will give you further instructions. The Shaman. He should spend more time with Steel and less in studies. Still, he can provide good advice. Do I want to... Who? I've told you all I will about the attack. The Imperial's business is their own. So you know more, but you're not telling us. 
Bears are one of the sacred creatures the Allmaker has blessed us with. They embody the warrior's strength, and some of the Skull can even summon them to fight by their sides. That's cool. They are the Bear Sarks, or Bear Chested. The Berserkers wear no clothing and have been driven mad by the cold and too much mead. They are now welcome here or anywhere else on Solstheim, for that matter. That name is not known to me. Uh, they cut the trees without planting. They dig the earth without care. These Imperials hunt the land's creatures with no honor or forethought. Their ways are short-sighted and foolish, and they are doomed if they continue along this path. It's fair enough. I know of the place filled with Imperials who have no respect for this place. I've heard them called that. We do not know what they really are. Perhaps an evil spirit, perhaps a great beast. Whatever they are, they are dangerous. Their claws and tusks rend armor and tear flesh. They attack alone or in packs. Take care when they are near. I haven't seen one yet, I don't think. Of course, wind eye, like falding. The largest lake, or largest on Solstheim, it is often used as a mating ground for the horkers of the island. Another, another of the Allmaker's wondrous creations. These creatures provide a great deal for our people. They are strong swimmers and fierce fighters on land and in the sea. I mean, they haven't... It seems like they're pretty easy to kill, so... I don't know. Wolves are fine creatures, but some can be diseased, and they become a danger to us all. Okay, oneness. Uh, Raven Rock. I've heard the Imperials have begun mining there. Fools. They take no care with this land. Windai will tell you more. I cannot count the number of them I've bloodied my axe with. They are creatures hardly warrior of, worthy of a warrior's attention. Mindless beasts. Well, I mean, they have mounts, so they can't be that mindless. We have precious few services to offer. We're simple people, and we need but our weapons and our health. If your weapons are your problem, check with Snedbrer the Smith. If it's your health that concerns you, speak with Bronrod the Roarer. Okay. A uh, gift from the Allmaker it allows the hunter to track his prey, and it can be tunneled into for shelter. Uh, let's see. Island of Solstheim, jewel of an island and home to the Skull. We settled here many generations ago. Okay. Uh, weapons and armor are in need of repair. S speak with Sned Breer the Smith. You'll find him in his house, his house usually. If it's a disease, you've got Bronrod the Roar may be able to help. Bronrod has some useful potions. Sned Breer can fix your weapons and armor. We're a small village without many needs. You might want to head back to the Imperials if you're looking for anything else. Well, presumably that's why Raven Rock is getting built up. The tree spirits of this island, when the Allmaker breathed life in the creatures of this land, his breath brew, blew through the trees as well. Some of these trees kept a part of this life, and these are the Spriggans you see today. I'm Heartfang. Thursk is just to the east of Lake Felding. It's a mead hall that was built by a group of Skull who split from our village hundreds of years ago. They no longer follow our ways, but we've no quarrel with them. The tusked bristleback is a mystery to us. It is a natural being created by the Allmaker, but it is a cruel and vicious animal. The Ricklings use them as mounts and have bred the creatures to be even more warlike and dangerous. Werewolves. He didn't say anything about them, but I'm asking. They're perversions. Man was not meant to live a dual life as both rational being and animal. These beasts are evil and dangerous, but they are also very rare. More have been seen in recent times, though. Okay. All right. Into the shaman's hut. Nope. Is it red? I mean, is this the only red one? Corst wind eye. Fire petal. The five far stars. How much time do I have left? Enough. Greetings to you, Wanderer. Why have you come to our village? 
I can tell you no more about this. If there's information, Heartfang will have it. I'm sorry, I can do no more. Bears. Name is not known to me. Parkers. I'm Course Windai. How may I help you? Oneness. There's a careful balance that lies in all things of this world, the animals, the trees, even the rocks and the winds. It is a harmony that the skull draws power from by the grace of the Allmaker, he who gave us these gifts. When this balance is upset, our power is lessened. So these guys are kind of like druids. Except druids are, druids are like tree... Tree worshippers? Tree priests? These are like... They're animal spirit people, I guess. Okay. Let's see. Heartfang wishes for you to do this, does he? Then I will assist you. There is a ritual that must be completed. On Solstheim, you will find six standing stones, each representing one of the gifts of the Allmaker, one of the six gifts of the Allmaker. At each of these stones, a ritual must be completed. Once the ritual of the gifts is complete, the oneness should be restored. So, I remember standing stones were in... I think they were in Oblivion as well. But they were definitely in Skyrim. And they would, like, give you... permanent benefits? It's like our birth sign, but... You could change it, I guess. Vile little beast, but not as mindless as some may think. These creatures are intelligent, Luxley. Some are some are capable of speech, and all are capable of great cunning. So they're basically goblins. Uh, it would be too much for any knot of the skull to remember. Here, take this. It will explain the rituals and guide you on your way. This book may be of some use to you as well. If you are to remain with the skull, you should understand our beliefs. I bet this is kind of like the the Path of the Pilgrim, but for for them. Uh, journal updated story of Avar so Stone Singer has been added. Locations of the stones has been added as well. Snow. Solstice time. Specific place. Tree spirits of this island. Heartfang is the leader of our people. You'll find him in the Great Hall during most hours. He is the oldest of the Skull people, and his prowess in battle is legendary. He is quick to anger and quick to judge, so take care with him. Okay, so... Let's take a look at our... our thing. Um... Okay, Heartfang says he knows nothing about the attack. Creatures that attacked the fort were not normal wolves. Okay, so he's aware of werewolves. Seem pleased with my gift of the Skull Skull, willing to allow me to remain with the Skull for a time. Angry with the Imperial's presence on the island. They have no respect for the land or the creatures on it. Well, they don't understand. Um, he, they don't understand about the oneness and all that. He believes they're responsible for the dwindling power of the Skull's powerful nature magic. It's probably the werewolves. That would be my guess. Uh, spoke of how Imperials have disrupted the oneness of the land. I will need to atone for the mistakes of the Imperials. He wishes for me to perform a ceremony to restore the original power. Speak with Korst Wind Eye. Uh, Wind Eye tells me there are six standing stones, each representing one of the six gifts of the Allmaker. In order for me to perform the ceremony that Heartfang wishes, I will need to visit each of these stones and perform a ritual. Uh, I was given a scroll that shows the location of each of the stones, as well as a book that gives the history of the skull's beliefs. I should investigate these stones if I'm to restore the power of the skull. Right, so that is my current objective skull test of loyalty. Ah, I see. Well, okay. Sure. Right, inform Carnius. That's probably what I should do first. Actually, hang on. First. 
Can I read this? Loxley is the owner of 100 fully paid non-accessible shares. Oh. I bet if you were to choose Carnius aside, this would go way higher. Of the par value of one septum each of the common stock. Uh, da, 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 da. Certificate in the shares represented. Uh, certificate is not valid unless undersigned by the transfer agent and registered by the registrar. Signed C. Magnia, Magius, whatever. Okay. Locations of the stones. Okay, here we go. Sun, earth, tree, beast, wind, water. So you just have to go to those. That's fine. What I think I should do... Um... How long is this? Uh, that's pretty freaking long, actually. Okay. We'll read this. Go back to... We'll use the recall. Go back to, um... Frostmoth. Tell Carnius about the, the trader post. Back to Alzrune. Give the dude... the stuff. Maybe he'll tell me how to get the axe at that point. And, um... And then come back here and figure out what, what to do after that. Okay. Sit quietly, child, and listen for the story I tell you is a story of the ages. But what is it, Grandfather? Is it a story of heroes and beasts? The Grandfather looked patiently at the child. He was growing into a fine boy. Soon he would see the value in the stories, the lessons that were taught to each generation. Just listen, child. Let the story take root in your heart. In a time before now, long before now, when the skull were new, there was peace in the land. The sun was hot and the crops grew long, and the people were happy in the peace that the Allmaker provided. But the skull grew complacent and lazy, and they took for granted the lands and all the gifts the Allmaker had given them. They forgot, or chose not to remember, that the adversary is always watching, and that he delights in tormenting the Allmaker and his chosen people. And so it was that the adversary came to be among the skull. The adversary has many aspects. He appears in the unholy beast and the incurable plague. At the end of seasons, we will know him as Thartag, the world devourer. But in these ages, he came to be known as the greedy man. The greedy man, that is what we call him for to speak his name would certainly bring ruin on the people, lived among the skull for many months. Perhaps he was once just a man, but when the adversary entered, in, entered into him, he became the greedy man, and that is how he is remembered. It came to be one day the powers of the skull left them. It's happening again. The strength left the arms of the warriors, and the shaman could no longer summon the beast to their side. The elders thought that surely the Allmaker was displeased, and some suggest the Allmaker had left them forever. It was then that the greedy man appeared to them and spoke. You of the skull have grown fat and lazy. I've stolen the gifts of your Allmaker. I've stolen the oceans, so you will forever know thirst. I've stolen the lands and the trees and the sun so your crops will wither and die. I've stolen the beasts, so you will go hungry. And I've stolen the winds, so you will live without the spirit of the Allmaker. And until one of you can reclaim these gifts, the Skull will live in misery and despair. For I am the greedy man, and that is my nature. And the greedy man disappeared. The members of the Skull spoke for many days and nights. They knew that one of them must retrieve the gifts of the Allmaker, but they could not decide who it should be. I cannot go, said the Elder, for I must stay to lead the Skull and tell our people what is the law. This reminds me of, um... It sounds really stupid, uh... Joe versus the Volcano, which is a Tom Hanks movie from back when he was actually funny. Uh... And it's basically like this... Like Hawaiians. It's this, you know, tribe that lives on a volcano and they worship the spirit of the volcano. And, um, you know, it's like every however many years, every hundred years, someone has to go throw themselves into the volcano as a sacrifice so that the crops will grow and, and all that stuff. Um, 
And so Tom Hanks' character basically gets, you know, finds out that he has like brain cancer basically and it's incurable and this rich dude's like hey you know i have a mining interest on this thing i'll pay for whatever you want all expenses paid you could spend as much money as you want for you know for a couple of weeks but then at the end of the couple of weeks you got to go throw yourself into the volcano so the tribe will grant me access to their their mines and i can make a bunch of money and I'm going to spoil the movie. Um, so skip ahead a little bit. But Joe uh, throws himself into the volcano. He gets ejected out uh, just randomly. It's it's random luck. It's not realistic. But it's his sacrifice is rejected. Uh, and because he... Uh, because none of the people on the island, none of the actual tribe wanted to sacrifice themselves... The spirit of the volcano is displeased, and he spares the one that's willing to sacrifice himself, which is Joe. And then he the the volcano erupts and kills everyone else on the island. And that's that's how it is. It's like the ones that are willing to do what is necessary are, you know, should not die, so that the lazy ones can live. You know. That's what I think of when I read this. And and that's what I thought of when, when the dude's like, you're the one that needs to atone. It's like, I mean, maybe. Anyway, I cannot go, said the warrior, for I must protect the skull. My sword will be needed in case the greedy man reappears. I cannot go, said the shaman, for the people need my wisdom. I must read the portents and offer my knowledge. It was then that a young man called Avar lifted his voice. He was strong of arm, fleet of foot, though he was not yet a warrior of the skull. I will go, said Avar, and the skull laughed. Hear me out, the boy continued. I am not yet a warrior, so my sword will not be needed. I cannot read the portents, so the people will not seek my counsel. And I am young, and not yet wise in the ways of the law. I will retrieve the gifts of the Allmaker from the greedy man. If I cannot, I will not be missed. The skull thought on this briefly and decided to let Avar go. He left the village the next morning to retrieve the gifts. I mean, this is typically how it goes, but... That's why I kind of love Grimm's fairy tales, because they always get punished. It's not like the Disney fantasy. It's like, you know, it's they're like, don't open this thing or you'll be sorry. And they open it and they die. And it's like, well, yeah, they told you not to open it. You know, it's like the people are like, well, I shouldn't go because of this. And the dude's like, all right, well, I go. I'll, if, no, if I die, if I fail, whatever. But... That's what happens. It's like the, the lazy people profit from the sacrifice of of the people willing to actually do the work, and that's not acceptable. Um, Avar first set out to retrieve the gift of water, so he traveled to the water stone. It was there the Allmaker first spoke to him. Travel west of the sea and follow the swimmer to the waters of life. So Avar walked to the edge of the ocean, and there was the swimmer, a black horker sent from the Allmaker. The swimmer dove into the waters and swam very far and far again. Avar was strong, though, and he swam hard. He followed the swimmer to a cave, swimming deeper and deeper, his lungs burning and his limbs exhausted. At last, he found a pocket of air. There, in the dark, he found the waters of life. Gathering his strength, he took the waters and swam back to the shore. Upon returning to the Waterstone, the Allmaker spoke. You have returned the gift of water to the Skull. The oceans again will bear fruit, and their thirst will be quenched. Avar then traveled to the Earthstone, and the Allmaker spoke to him again. Enter the Cave of the Hidden Music. Oh! And hear the Song of the Earth. So Avar traveled north and east to the Cave of the Hidden Music. He found himself in a large cavern where the rocks hung from the ceiling and grew from the ground itself. He listened there and heard the Song of the Earth, but it was faint. Grabbing up his mace, he struck the rocks of the floor in time with the song. The song grew louder until it filled the cavern in his heart. Then he returned to the heart earth stone. I wonder how much of the stuff I'm really going to have to do. Am I going to have to go there and whack the ground with the mace? Probably so. Gift of the earth is with the skull again, said the Allmaker. The lands are rich again and will bear life. Avar was tired. As the sun burned him, the trees offered no shade and there was no wind to cool him. Still, he traveled on to the Beast Rock, and the Allmaker spoke. Find the good beast and ease his suffering. 
Avar traveled through the woods of the Sinif Sinfir Sinfir for many hours until he heard the cries of a bear from over a hill. As he crested a hill, he saw the bear, a Falmer's arrow piercing its neck. Falmers are snow elves, or at least they used to be. Check the woods for the Falmer, for that is what they were, though some say they are not. And finding none, approached the beast. He spoke soothing words and came upon it slowly, saying, Good beast, I mean you no harm. The Allmaker has sent me to ease your suffering. Hearing these words, the bear ceased his struggles and laid his head at Avar's feet. Avar grasped the arrow and pulled it from the bear's neck. Using the little nature magic he knew, Avar tended the wound, though it took the last bit of strength. As the bear's wound closed, Avar slept. When he awoke, the bear stood over him and the remains of a number of the Falmer were strewn about. <laughs> he knew the good beast had protected him during the night. He traveled back to Beast Rock, the bear by his side, and the Allmaker spoke to him again. You have returned the gift of the beasts. Once again, the good beasts will feed the skull when they are hungry, clothe them when they are cold, and protect them in times of need. Avar's strength had returned, so he traveled on to the tree stone, though the good beast did not follow him. When he arrived, the Allfather spoke to him. The first trees are gone and must be replanted. Find the seed and plant the first tree. Avar traveled again through the Herstang forest, searching for the seeds of the first tree, but he could find none. Then he spoke to the tree spirits, the living trees. They told him the seeds had been stolen by one of the Falmer, for they are the servants of the adversary. And this Falmer was hiding them deep in the forest so that none would ever find them. Avar traveled to the deepest part of the forest, and there he found the evil Falmer, surrounded by the lesser tree spirits. Avar could see the spirits were in his thrall, that he had used the magic of the seeds and spoken their secret name. Avar knew he could not, he could not stand against such a force, and that he must retrieve the seeds in secret. Avar reached into his pouch and drew out his flint. Gathering leaves, he started a small fire outside the clearing where the Falmer and the ensorcelled spirits milled. <clears throat> All the Skull knew the spirit's hatred of fires, for the fires ravaged the trees they serve. At once, the nature of the spirits took hold, and they rushed to quell the flames. During the commotion, Avar snuck behind the Falmer and snatched the pouch of seeds, stealing away before the evil knew they were gone. When Avar returned to the tree stone, he planted the tree in the ground, and the Allmaker spoke to him. Gift of trees is restored. Once again, the trees and plants will bloom and grow and provide nourishment and shade. Avar was tired, for the sun would only burn and the winds would not yet cool him, but he rested briefly in the shade of the trees. His legs were weary and his eyes heavy, but he continued on, traveling to the sunstone. Again, the Allmaker spoke. The gentle warmth of the sun is stolen, so now it only burns. Free the sun from the halls of Penumbra. And so Avar walked west over the frozen lands until he reached the halls of Penumbra. The air inside was thick and heavy, and he could see no farther than the end of his arm. Still, he felt his way along the walls, though he heard the shuffling of feet and knew this place held the unholy beasts who would tear his flesh and eat his bones. For hours he crept along until he saw a faint glow far at the end of the hall. There, from behind a sheet of perfect ice, came a glow so bright he had to shut his eyes, lest they be forever blinded. He plucked the flaming eye from one of the unholy beasts and threw it at the ice with all his might. A small crack appeared in the ice, then grew larger. Slowly, the light crept out between the cracks, winding them, splitting the ice wall into pieces. With the deafening crack, the wall crumbled and the light rushed over Avar and through the hulls. He heard the shrieks of the unholy beasts as they were blinded and burned. He ran out of the hulls, following the light, and collapsed on the ground outside. When he was able to rise again, the sun again warmed him, and he was glad for that. He traveled back to the sunstone where the Allmaker spoke to him. The gift of the sun is the skulls once again. It will warm them and give them light. Avar had one final gift he had to recover, so the gift of the, the gift of the winds. So he traveled to the windstone, far on the western coast of the island. When he arrived, the Allmaker spoke to him, giving him his final task. Find the greedy man and release the wind from his captivity. So, Avar wandered the land and searched the greedy man. He looked in the trees, but the greedy man did not hide there, nor did he hide near the oceans or the deep caves, and the beasts had not seen him in the dark forests. 
Finally, Avar came to a crooked house, and he knew that here he would find the greedy man. Who are you, shouted the greedy man, that you would come to my house? I am Avar of the Skull, said Avar. I am not warrior, shaman, or elder. If I do not return, I will not be missed. But I have returned the oceans and the earth, the trees, the beasts, and the sun, and I will return the winds to my people, so that we may feel the spirit of the Allmaker in our souls again. And with that, he grabbed up the greedy man's bag and tore it open. The winds rushed out with gale force, sweeping the greedy man up and carrying him off, far from the island. Avar breathed in the winds and was glad. He walked back to the windstone where the Allmaker spoke to him a final time. You have done well, Avar. You, the least of the Skull, have returned my gift to them. The greedy man is gone now and should not trouble your people again in your lifetime. Your Allmaker is pleased. Go now and live according to your nature. And Avar started back to the Skull Village. And then what happened, Grandfather? What do you mean, child? He went home. No, when he returned to the village, the child continued, was he made a warrior or taught the ways of the shaman? Did he lead the skull in battle? I do not know. That is where the story ends, said the grandfather. But that is not an ending. That is not how stories end. The old, <laughs> the old man laughed and got up from his chair. Is it not? Kind of is. Okay, so. That's, yeah, so... Probably each of those stones has a quest associated with it. So we're probably going to do six quests, come back, and then they're going to be like, do one or two more, and then the whole thing. You know, three more maybe, and then it'll be done. All right, so first, because we're running out of time, so let's recall. We're go. We're going to go tell Carnius so that time will advance. Do I have anything else I need to sell? I don't know. I mean, I have snow wolf pelts. I could maybe get some... armor made or something. I don't know. What say you? Stuck here. Forever. Yes, you're stuck in the stairwell. Falco. Fine. Just leaves more for me. Oh, really? Not now, I'm expecting a decision from Falco. It's colony business, it doesn't concern you. What? Fine, fine, that's fine. I honestly don't care, just make sure there are no problems. I don't want to be bothered with this again. Gold was added, journal updated. Carnius has been informed of the decision regarding construction plans. I should check back in a few days when the work is done. What is it, Fixer? Uh... You chose to ally yourself with Falco and then come to me expecting work? I didn't realize you were that stupid. See, this doesn't even make any freaking sense. That's so nice. You must want something. All right, well. Uh, yeah. Amulet Recall. Bam. Let us do Alm Civi Intervention, because we want to go to Aldrun. This, I think, should be nicest. Yes. Why walk when you can ride? Aldrun, bam. All right, dude. Luxley, you're here, and well, I mean, you've returned. What news? I found the wreckage of the airship, but there are no survivors. I've recovered the captain's journal, which explains everything. I've recovered the amulet of infectious charm as well. The airship crashed, smashed, was dashed into the mountain. Horrible, horrible. Such a loss of time and money. Oh, yes, yes. Human life, too. Yeah. Mustn't forget the crew. People, after all. Well, I'm thankful, grateful, really, that you've come to me with, um, with this information. And, ah, incredible work with the finding. That is the recovery of, um, the Amulet of Infectious Charm. My thanks, Loxley. Here, please, take, have this gold. Journal updated twice. Amulet of Charm removed. Captain's journal removed, 2,000 gold added. What about Hrothman's Barrow? It's a gravesite, you see, located, situated near, um, well, if the stories are true, and I believe, well, I hope they are. Hrothman's Barrow is at the eye, eye of the wolf, you see. You can only see the eye, see the only the whole wolf, really, from the air. So if I may say so, the airship was a brilliant idea. 
Um, recover the amulet. Okay. Okay, we've already... Okay, so I guess that's it. True failed me. Well, yeah, okay. And I think that's it. That's all. So we just got... Just get gold. Should you need something, I would be happy to oblige. Um, okay, now that I've learned what happened to the airship and recovered the amulet of infectious charm, my work for Louis Bouchamp or Louis Bouchamp is complete. Beauchamp, whatever. It's, uh... you got to be able to do something with the axe. I don't know what, but that's okay. Oh yeah, we have Cyrodiilic Brandy. Let us Wolfsbane Petals. We'll... I feel like those are important. It's that's probably going to be one of the the tree things or something. I don't know. You know. Let's go to. Do we want to go anywhere? Uh. It's ten. Yeah. Uh. You know what? No, it's fine. Let's let's do amulet of recall. We will go inside one of these things. We'll wait a few days for the quest to update. <sighs> two forty nine. Yep. Okay. Okay, we gotta wait. Probably three days. Journal updated. Construction on the trader's outpost should be nearly complete. Nearly complete. That's okay, let's go there. I really should go back to... Balmora, I suppose, just so I can get so I can enchant my my pants with um the uh whatever to make constant you know fatigue regeneration because it would really help with the um with all the running All right so we'll run back we'll presumably talk to Falco Falco? Is that his name? There's a Spriggan. Oh, here we go. They tear down the trees without planting or whatever. Oh, is there a traitor here now? Mine entrance... Hmm. No, it's probably not yet. You're an assignment? Work is almost done. Let Carnius know, would you? Really? That's, uh... That's the deal? I'm an agent. Okay. Decisions are good, but good decisions are better. So, construction on the trader's output should be nearly complete. Do I, uh... Oh, wow, lock level 100, huh? Well, if it isn't you again. South Storehouse. I'm gonna... Let's just wait another 24 hours. Hmm... Work is almost done. Let Carn are good, but good decisions are Let Carnius know. That's very strange. It's very strange that they
they're like, oh, just go out there and then all of a sudden go back. And why would I? That doesn't make sense. Unless they just wanted me to go away from Carnius to see him. He's horribly murdered or something. Traitor is almost done. Fine, fine. Leave me alone. Journal updated. Told Carnius work on the traitor's outpost is done. Okay. Okay, well, let's go back there and ask for another assignment, I guess. That's kind of silly. A lot of pointless going back and forth. I could take the boat, but who cares? Actually, that's a great point. Because I have plenty of money. Is is the point... Would taking the boat pass time? Is, is that why they do it? I don't know. There's a bear, another naked person. Another bear. Spriggan. Another naked person. Hmm, excuse me. All right, dude, I want another assignment. Uh, seems nothing is easy, Loxley. Carnius' replacement supply ship has brought new problems with it, namely one Barrow Ignatius. Ignatius. He seems to think he deserves extra payment for delivering our supplies, taking the ore back to the mainland, and I, for one, have no intention of giving in to him. I've given up trying to reason with him. Why don't you try talking some sense into him? Captain of the new supply ship that's arrived. He should still be down by the dock. I don't believe he's budged since he made his demands for extra payment. He's demanding a ridiculous sum of money. I won't even repeat what it is, or else he'll refuse to take any of the ore back to the mainland. This is unacceptable, and something needs to be done about it. I've tried reasoning with him to no avail. I'd like you to talk to him. Seems... Decisions are good, but good decisions are good. Seems suspicious. Why he's not... Is it a setup from, uh... Oh, they have a dock now. Is that the traitor? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Right, it's... It's almost a setup from the, uh... The other dude. Well, either way, that is it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. Really do appreciate it. Really, if you guys are enjoying these episodes... What is your guys' unique pause moment for today? Uh, for me, I'm going to go with that guy, uh, Drek Malleus again, the YouTuber. I finished watching his AM2R videos, and uh, I mostly enjoyed them. I mean, it is frustrating from time to time, but that's how people have to be sometimes when they watch my stuff as well, I think. So it's, it's a good humility teacher, I guess. Um, that's my unique positive moment. Hopefully you guys just as good, if not better. Hopefully better, of course. And I hope to see you guys next time. Till then, guys, take care.